I know your resume would fill this red carpet, but if I were to ask you, who is Cheryl Pallote Williamson? How would you answer that question? Cheryl Pallote Williamson is a server and a woman who is on a mission to leave a legacy in this earth of showing kindness, showing love and opening doors for other women to win who have come to a point in their life where they feel like, what do I do now with the second act of my life? Just reading a little bit about you, a couple of words came to mind for me. You're sort of an economic chameleon. Yes. And a serial entrepreneur. You are always looking to answer that question, what's next? Yes. Do you find and have you found in your journey that there were a lot of women doing the same, trying to figure out what's next and not really having a road map or anybody having those discussions? I absolutely found a lot of women who were trying to figure out what's next. And so when I realized that I had a formula to help them figure it out, that opened the door and not just opened the door, it, it turned on a light inside the women. It made, it set their souls on fire because we were able to have open candid conversations about as long as you're breathing, it's never too late. It's never too late to be great. So let's stop looking at, oh, I'm 45, I'm 55, I'm 76. If you're breathing, there is time for it. And that's what I've mastered but myself I in doing. Our culture doesn't really send that message. No. It's almost as though after 35, 40, oh, well, uh, you know, no, the advertisers don't care. You know, we're, it seems our whole culture is chasing the millennials, that no one's really talking about middle-aged women and how much that this group of women still has to contribute. Why does that need to change? Because we are the people that have the wisdom in order to help the next generation. We've opened the doors, we've helped the children, we've run the corporations, and we are an asset to the community. And I love this question because I actually posted something on social media and I tagged many major corporations saying, you're missing your mark, not focusing on women over 50 because we have the resources. Our kids are already grown if we have them and they're out of the house. So we can now come in. We don't have to call off from work because there's nobody at home. We've already mastered the skills. We just need the opportunity to use the skills and we are not gonna miss the mark because we know that this is the second act of our life. What kind of response do you get when you are helping women figure out that next step? And how do you do that? What's that process? The process is I do it by example. The example is I show them what's possible. I don't tell them and then I make it where it's easy. And when I say easy, I show them how to write the books. I show them how to walk into a corporation with their head held high, not concerned about, oh, I'm 55, I have gray hair. No, you're showing your wisdom. So I prep them in all the ways that I have done through reading books, through going through the, to the Small Business Administration to get that free information that I can get and then teaching it to somebody else. And this is what I love. The way that I lead by example, it lets people know that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do it. That if I can do it, you can do it. And that is the way that I'm able to bring more women into the industries that I'm involved in because I do make it look easy, but I bring them along so they feel like it's easy. I don't make it look hard. It's part of the challenge and part of the success even, and just having the conversation and daring to speak to women of this demographic and encouraging them, prodding them, whatever you need to do. To say, don't just sit around and act like life is over because it's a new season. Yes, and it is hard because a lot of women have been knocked down and told every reason that it cannot happen for them. You're too old. You don't have the right education. You've been home raising children. You don't have the experience in the field. So what I teach them is mindset first. 
I show them that when they make their mindset their superpower, that they can accomplish anything. So I build them up, letting them know that you matter, that you have a gift and a talent to deliver to the world that only you can give. Once they conquer it in their mind, then the world opens up to them because now they're not looking for somebody to endorse them or validate them because I've gone, walked them through the process of knowing that validation is for parking. It's not for people. And they write that mantra out. They're like, validation is for parking, not people. That's what Cheryl says. And it's placed up on their board. So when they walk into a room and somebody is treating them a certain way, they're like, I don't need them to validate me. I am walking in this room like I'm supposed to be in the room. How did you get here? You, I, I, I feel the passion that you have for reaching, coaching, and encouraging these women. How do you reach the people that you are supporting? Is it through social media? Is it through, how, how, how have you built that family? I built it through sharing affirmations online when I was at a very low point. My mother-in-law had passed away from cancer. My husband had been diagnosed with cancer. He is a survivor. And then I got diagnosed with supraventricular tachycardia. And there were uh, some betrayal that happened in, in business and some other things. And I started posting out on social media and thousands of people started responding to me saying, that's my story. Help me, help me. So the more they will respond, the more affirmations I will put. I receive preferential treatment. I receive God inspired ideas that produce millions of dollars. I am affirmed. I am an abundant thinker. And so thousands and thousands of people started getting in contact with me. And one day I was in the shower and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, it's time for you to write this book. And I said, well, what is the book supposed to be about? And he said, it's the power of affirmations. And I said, where am I supposed to get them from? And I heard the Lord say to me, it's all on social media. I gave it to you the past 18 months. So I pulled all the affirmations off social media, matched scripture to them, put lines so people, people could report, record their thinking. And I placed it in a book that's now sold over 30,000 copies. Corporations hire me now to come in and speak to their teams because they realize they can't walk around to everybody's desk, but if I can empower your mind and your team's mind, they don't need you to stop at their desk every day and tell them, you're brilliant, you're doing a great job. I teach people how to know that for themselves. So on that day where nobody is available to tell you, you look amazing, let me celebrate you, you can celebrate yourself we have heard more probably in the last few years about mental health yes. than we have in decades. Mental health and mindset and the power yes. of mindset. It sounds like you're also very much tapping into that with the people that you are supporting. Absolutely, because your mindset is your superpower. If your mindset is right, you can achieve anything. You can achieve the thing that people told you would never happen for you. My email address has been drcwilliamson66 since email started. And everybody would say, are you a doctor? I said, not yet. Are you a doctor? I said, not yet. But see, my mindset was if I make that my email address, I have to make this come true. So it took me 24 years, but now I'm Dr. Cheryl Williamson. It's because my mindset has been my superpower. My mindset has placed me in spaces and opportunities and stages that to someone else would be impossible. But when you master the power of your mind, you can be broke one day and a millionaire the next day because you never take your mind into that place that I don't have enough money. I only receive bills in the mail. I don't know about you, but I go to the mailbox dancing. I'm like, I know it's checks in the mail. I say that every time. Oh, it's checks in the mail. I, I receive checks in the mail. It's a mindset. Okay, I don't think I've ever gone to the mailbox doing that. I'm going to try. Talk to me. I know you stay busy. Tell me about some of the things that you do and have done as this serial entrepreneur. I, I know author, publisher, motivational yes. speaker, and of course, what brings us here? 
I'm super excited. I am actually a best-selling author of 19 books. I am super excited because after waiting 12 years and having it on my vision board to be signed to a literary agent, I just signed to a literary agent on yesterday. We are in this amazing space at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters because I am a global media executive. So I produced my first stage play here at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters five years ago. And we're here today because I'm now producing my fifth stage play. I have four films. I actually am an executive HBO Max award-winning executive producer for 20 Pearls, which is the story of Alpha Kappa Alpha. And it happened because I believe that it was possible. I have a magazine that I started in the middle of the pandemic that went from an 11 page newsletter to an 80 to 120 page full color magazine, Cheryl magazine, inspiration for the everyday woman. And I have to tell you why I did that magazine because when I looked on the market, I wanted something for women that wasn't filled with gossip. I wanted something that women could turn every page and see themselves see themselves in health, see themselves in finance, see themselves traveling. And the best thing about that magazine is every single woman that works for that magazine is over 45 years old. That magazine has been the second chance for women who gave up their journalism careers to raise their children, for women who wanted to write for magazines but nobody would accept them, and now those women have had the opportunity to be in the trenches with me for four years, delivering in excellence globally, something that they could be proud of each and every time that it's on the market. The thing about reaching this demographic, what are some of the things that you have found usher in that next season? that maybe you're not thinking about when you're 20 and 25 and 30. But if you live long enough, you will hit this next season. Absolutely. I talk to women about sharing their memoirs. That's not something normally that we think about when we're 25 years old because we don't think that we have a story to tell. But at this stage, it's, you can write that book that helps someone else. You can produce that film or that stage play or um, like I just met a lady, she set up a dating service for people over 55 because some people have never been married. Some people are looking for a mate. It's that chance to live bold and fierce and unapologetic because we have to realize that when the second chance comes, that's exactly what it is. It's the second, phase. there's nobody that's gonna live to 200. It's just not gonna happen. So when we're 45 and up, we have to realize it's time for us to make it count. It's time for us to do those things that have been burning in our heart, producing that recipe book, opening that restaurant that we've always wanted to open. And I want people to know that there are resources available for us. All we have to do is do the research. When you ask me about how do people find out about me, I serve, 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 and share information. I'm that person that's going to share every piece of information that I get because I want everybody to win. Because I realize their winning, it helps me win. Their winning does not stop me from winning. And that's what we have to realize. And even more so at 50 and above, we have to stick together and make sure that we're all winning, that all of our dreams can come true. And we can actually come together to make some of those dreams come true. So many things can usher in that second season. Yes. It, it, it could be widowhood, loss yes. of a spouse, divorce, yes. or even those good things like the children growing up and going off to college. Yes. And I think that's a shocker for a lot of women because you, you pour your whole life Absolutely. into raising those kids, making sure they're taken care of, doing everything they need to be successful. There's no time really for most of us to think about what's next for me because you're giving everything to them. Absolutely. And suddenly they're off on your own and you have to answer that question. Yes. What's next? And you are encouraging them to answer that question in the affirmative. Absolutely. And I also wanna encourage us 
to stop giving from an empty cup. For those of us who have spent our whole lives pouring, 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 I encourage women right now to give from the overflow, not from the deficit, to show yourself the same grace that you've shown everybody else, to go and get the same checkups that we make sure that everybody else gets, to make sure that we buy ourselves the spa certificate and use it. Because I think for many of us, we value everybody else so much and we put no value on our hopes and our dreams. And that leads to what we were talking about before, mental health. Mental health sometimes when we get 50 and above, we don't feel like we have an outlet. We don't feel like anybody understands us. When you talk about the death of a spouse or the death of a child, that's why women 45 and up, we've got to come together and start addressing the things that no one talks to us about. Our mothers talk to us about menstruation, but not menopause. <laughs> And so those are conversations that we need to have because a lot of times that affects our mental health. That affects us feeling like we're worthy. And when we come together and we speak life into each other and over each other, I see you. That's like yesterday I posted on social media last night about 10 o'clock. It said, will you join me in complimenting 10 people today? Hundreds of people said, yes, I'm in, I'm in. So can you imagine walking up to a woman that does not quite feel herself and say, I love your shoes, I love your hair, you look so beautiful. It's the simplicity of those words that change people's heart, that change people's day. It's not complicated, it's very simple. Keep a mind knowing that you have the ability to change someone's life by your words. When do you slow down? <laughs> My kids ask me that. And the funny thing is, I am I'm taking a month off oh, ooh, in September. Month. Yes, I decided I'm going to take a month off because I need to regroup and I need to make sure that I'm full because what I don't want to be is a hypocrite. Telling people, oh, live your best life, uh, pour into yourself, and then I'm not full. So I, I can feel that with the play and the books and the other things coming up that I need to take a break. And I think many times we don't want to take a break because we don't want to slow down. It's going to give us time to think about maybe things that we don't want to think about. I want to encourage people to do that. Take that time to be good to yourself. Take that time to slow down and have an experience. I was just talking to somebody about um, someone about um, not getting handbags and these type things. I said, I really would prefer the experience. I said, because that's what I'm gonna remember. I'm not gonna remember, oh, I got, who got me this handbag, but I'll remember us sitting, even us sitting here right now in this moment, smiling at each other, acknowledging the fact that we are doing something that's gonna elevate the lives of those who listen to what we're saying right now by giving them a mental health check to say, you know what? I, I do need to love me. I do need to show me grace. My dreams do matter. I am going to write down right now, my mindset is my superpower. And that mere statement is changing my life. Notice I didn't say will. You have to speak in the affirmative. Will means it might or might not. How excited are you about this nearest next step, bringing the stage play to the ballot? I am absolutely thrilled. My heart is so full because I have partnered with a young lady that saw me on a red carpet at a film festival and said, can I take a picture with you? And I took the picture and she said, I really want to work with you. And now we've done three stage plays together. So for me, that's a testimony of being true to when you say you want to help other women win, that's helping another woman win. Sure, we could talk all day, I but I know I won't be able to get it all in this story. So was there anything you wanted to say and I just didn't ask you the question? I would like to share with everyone who will listen to this to never live so deeply in somebody else's dreams that you never fulfill any of your own.